Have you ever looked up at the night sky and thought to yourself, this is the same sky that my ancestors gazed upon? Obviously, if you live in a different region of the world now than your ancestors grew up in, then you're getting a slightly different view. But besides that technicality, every single human being from prehistoric times to now has more or less had the same view of the stars at night. Assuming you live somewhere with minimal light pollution so that you can actually see those stars in the first place. But if you've done any stargazing over the past few years, you probably noticed a parade of lights floating across the sky in a somewhat straight line. Those aren't shooting stars or UFOs, they're Starlink Internet. And the existence of these satellites has been a real bane for astronomy photographers who use long exposure times in order to capture better images of the night sky. Because satellites and other non-celestial bodies that travel through the shot end up creating streaks of light in the final photograph. Now, technically, this has been an issue for decades at this point. Even astronomy photographs from the early 90s will have the occasional streak of light that's caused by a photobombing satellite. But at this point, Starlink has put more satellites into space than NASA and every other government-funded space program combined. And the end result are these photos of the stars having more visible streaks in them than white underwear after Taco Tuesdays. However, I'm sure with the advancements that are being made in AI photo editing, that someone will devise a way to easily remove those ugly streaks of light in photos of the night sky if someone hasn't figured out how to do that already. So the photobombing effect of Starlink satellites should honestly be the least of anyone's worries. And of course, Starlink has provided a lot of good to the world. The global reach of it has provided internet to troops in Ukraine, paramilitary forces in Sudan, hospitals in Gaza, and emergency responders all over the world. And it has also provided internet access to the most remote parts of the Amazon rainforest which has resulted in people who are largely cut off from modern civilization having access to the internet for the first time. The Marubo people are just one example of this clash with tradition and modernity. The tribe consists of roughly 2,000 people who live in huts, speak their own language, hunt their own food, and partake in ayahuasca consumption in order to connect with forest spirits and their ancestors. Now, even though the people in this tribe are, in many ways, living the same kind of life that they have for thousands of years, they've still been enjoying some modern luxuries from the outside world, like clothing and plastic containers. Some members of the tribe have even made their way into the cities in order to get jobs and purchase things, like smartphones and other goods. And of course, people from the cities have come into the tribe to give things to them as well. That's actually how the Starlink satellites got to the village in the first place. They were hiked in through miles of jungle on the backs of men wearing flip-flops or nothing on their feet at all, along with solar panels to power the satellites. Now, I wanna make it clear that satellite internet is not something that was necessarily forced onto this tribe, at least not directly. The Starlink dishes got there as a result of one of the tribe's leaders named Enoke, who spent many years outside of the forest working in the city as a graphic designer for Coca-Cola. Obviously, he has experience with internet and computers from his city job, and he saw Starlink as an opportunity to bring those skills and knowledge to the rest of his people. Now clearly, Starlink could provide some benefit to the people that are living there. One of the biggest advantages would simply be the ability to communicate easier. This tribe obviously has members that go into the city, and some of them probably decided to move out of the forest permanently, but they still have friends and family and ties to people that are living there in the tribe. Before Starlink and the ability for people in the tribe to do video calls with smartphones, the only way for them to reconnect would be a dangerous journey on foot through the jungle into the village 
or the other way around, people who don't really want to leave the jungle traveling out into the city to meet with their distant relatives. And better communication is also useful to the people that are still living in the jungle. Since they're still living as hunter-gatherers, I'd imagine that this technology could make it easier to coordinate hunts, or if someone stumbles upon the mother load of all berries or some other wild fruit in the jungle, they could send a message to someone that's in the village to bring a bunch of baskets with them to their location in order to collect it all. And of course, there's huge potential for online learning. I'd imagine that most of the children that are growing up in this village don't get much of a formal education. But if they have access to all of the world's knowledge at their fingertips, they can learn a lot of things and be prepared to get a good job should they decide to leave the jungle and live in the modern world. There's no doubt in my mind that internet access could lead to great things, but as we all know all too well, unrestricted internet access given to those who don't have the self-discipline to handle it can have catastrophic results. One of the older women in the village remarked that when Starlink arrived, Everyone was happy, but now things have gotten worse. Young people have gotten lazy because of the internet. She says that young people are less interested in making traditional dyes and jewelry and instead are learning the ways of the white people. But please don't take our internet away. She recognizes the danger, but still wants to keep the internet around for its benefits. Young people have started to become glued to their smartphone, getting addicted to social media and video games, and of course, many of the villagers have started using online pornography. Now, as I explained in my last video, the gooning addiction is something that even a lot of young men in the modern world are struggling with, but it's something that gradually developed in the West over time. Back in the old days of dial-up, you'd have to wait several minutes just for a single dirty picture to load on your screen, and it was basically impossible to have instant access to full HD videos that are catered to every fetish imaginable. But these people, who never had used the internet before, are being thrown headfirst into the bottomless pit of goon flicks on the World Wide Web. The consequences of this could be much more severe than the North Koreans who are picking up that addiction right now in the Ukraine because the Marubo people are even further removed from this modern vice than the North Koreans are. Because the Koreans, they've only been isolated from the rest of the world since the Korean War, and even though North Korea is less technically advanced than South Korea, they're obviously much more modernized than a tribe of 2,000 people that are living a hunter-gatherer lifestyle in a remote part of the Amazon rainforest. In a society like this, the entire tribe has to work in order to sustain itself. There aren't any massive factory farms and acres of crops that get harvested by automated combines and feed pretty much everybody out there. If the men are too busy gooning to hunt, then the tribe will go hungry. Same thing if the women are too busy scrolling on Instagram to go out and gather fruit from the jungle. If the weavers don't make baskets and the fletchers don't make or repair bows and arrows, then the villagers won't even have the tools that they need to get food when they finally awake from their goon cocoons with their stomachs rumbling. And possibly worst of all, if the young people don't have any interest in the culture and customs of their tribe because they're too busy playing Candy Crush when the village shaman and the elders are telling the stories of their people, then they can lose that connection to who they are. Most of that information is passed down from generation to generation in an oral tradition. And if one generation ends up too glued to their screens to receive it, then the stories will be lost forever. I really hope that internet access doesn't end up destroying these people's cultures like it has done for so many others. I suppose a new role of network administrator could arise within the village to limit what is accessible to the members of the tribe like many governments around the world do. And hopefully the kids that are watching influencers online don't learn about the VPNs that sponsor them too early in order to bypass those restrictions and accelerate the death of their culture. Tell me your thoughts about remote tribes getting internet access in the comments below. 
like and share this video to hack the algorithm, and check out my online store, based.win, where you can buy my awesome merch and accessories for your electronics, 10% discount store-wide for paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.